15. Fishing the DMV has big plans for the future, but to get there, I need your help. We are only 15 Patreon members away from our next major milestone for $6 a month, which is less than a pack of Senkos or a Jackhammer Chatterbait. All Patreon members will receive 5% off their orders to Jake's Bait and Tackle, 20% off their orders to Shallow Water Fishing Adventures Tackle, 10% off their orders to Tiger Crankbaits, 10% off their orders to Catoctin Creek Custom Rods. They'll also gain access to our private Facebook group community, weekly giveaways, monthly giveaways, and also members only content. Again, we only need 15 more Patreon members to hit our next major milestone. And again, thanks to all of our Patreon members. If it wasn't for you, this show could not be possible. Thank you so much. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia, and Shallow Water Fishing Adventures Baits Online, located in Mount Airy, Maryland. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Monday Night Live. Here we are, almost at the end of May. My God, how the time has flown. Could I get a little bit of a mic check, mic check, please, by all the people in the wonderful audience right now? How do I sound? Do I need to turn it up? Do I need to turn it down? Do I sound crispy smooth before we get on with the show today? What a fan. It's been a crazy week. I had a the stop number three with the NVKBA event on the Shenandoah River. And then the other day, we had a fantastic time with um, with Mr. Chun, the smallmouth ninja, the smallmouth whisperer, getting it done on the Shenandoah River. I got to watch him fish, which was absolutely amazing, by the way. Uh, and before we bring on our special guest of the night, which the legend of the Upper Potomac himself, I would like to say that I am doing a Patreon members only stream tomorrow night. It is going to be how not to suck catching smallmouth on the Shenandoah River. That's going to be starting at 7 p.m. Tuesday night, only for Patreon members. I did one on the Potomac River and how I did well there. And I was I was debating whether or not to do one for the Shenandoah because I finished 12th, but I had a 19 inch keeper on that through the hook and if i got that on there i'd be in the top 10 so i'm like i i, I don't know like so i i feel like i still know something about the shenandoah river so i want to share my knowledge so i'll be giving you guys absolutely everything ask any question about the shenandoah river i'm going to do a full breakdown of the river how i approach it and that is for all of my patreon members and that of course if you cannot make it don't worry it'll be there available for you to watch later on so that's enough of that recap without further ado he is the myth of the Upper Potomac. He is the legend himself, Jeff Green, Shallow Water Fishing Adventures. How are you doing tonight, sir? Hey, what's up, man? Hello. How has good. life been? It's been good, man. What have you been, been up busy to? With, with I, I, I bet, bet just, you have. Just been. fishing. Yeah, it's been, I've been fishing a lot. What's been a lot? Fishing for on you? both rivers, the Potomac and the Susquehanna. Ooh, that's freaking awesome. Yeah. And the fishing's been good. It's been pretty uh, um, consistent. Right now, where do you think most of your trips are? Oh, on the Potomac. I, I mainly, I mainly fish the Potomac, but up on, I'm up on the Susquehanna once or twice a week. Oh wow, that's a lot more than I thought. Yeah. No, I I, I stay up there. Try to stay up there as much as possible to uh, um, to be familiar with what's going on. So if you didn't know, like, I mean, this kind of an interesting thing to get your thoughts on is we had the Shenandoah River kayak event. There was a good amount of anglers. I think between the both tournaments, it's easy to say there's like over 80 anglers probably on the river, which was pretty good turnout. Um, I, I did want to get your opinion on this with water clarity. We had that major rain that came in and people were terrified about, you know, flooding and high water. In your opinion, what happens to the smallmouth behavior when that water gets a little bit uh, turned up when the rain comes in? Well, it, it does the water. Um, they're probably going to go towards the shoreline because the water's going to rise more, more than likely. If there's enough water, the water's going to rise. It'll push them towards the shoreline, and then you're going to use spinner baits, chatter baits, um, maybe a rattle trap, something like that. 
what is dirty water to them? I'm assuming for the Potomac and the Shenandoah, they're used to like pretty gin clear water, right? To the Potomac? No, I mean, um, uh, stained water. D dirty water is just, it's just on the other side of muddy. Okay. Um, where you can kind of like still see your trolling motor head, but mm. the water looks, um, you know, if you put your trolling motor head all the way down, you can still see it, but, um, they like, uh, they like stained water. They like that water to be that green color. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Cause I felt like the water this past week. You want to be able to be in two feet of water and not be able to see the bottom. That's your perfect water condition. Yeah. Something like that, but it's not muddy or anything. It's just, it's just stained. Mm. Cause if they could yeah. see you, it, it spooks them. You have to that make longer casts then. That makes sense. Um, so we got a couple of things right here. We got River Good on Instagram says, good to go on Instagram. Fantastic. Kyle I says, let's go. We got uh, B Cal's Jr. that says, good evening, Thomas. Good evening, everyone. Time to party. Kyle I again, breaking the yak out this week. Topwater season is upon us. Yes, topwater season is coming, guys. It's going to be fun this weekend. I, though, probably I'm going to assume that every river is going to be packed <laughs> From Friday through Monday, are, are you guiding this weekend? Because that's got to be like a shit show. Yeah. Yeah, I'm guiding um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Mm. Goodness gracious. Let me see here. Yeah. Where the hell's a calendar on here, man? But yeah. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm uh, I'm guiding um, this Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Um, that'll that'll be fun. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, it's a holiday weekend, everyone, so it's going to be crazy busy. So just please be safe out there. You know, the the game wardens will definitely be out. So just just be prepared and and just be vigilant while you're out there. Top water season. Uh, uh, Kyle, I really you know, mentioned something. Put put the nail on the head there. If top water season's upon us, what are your top pun intended top top water baits that you throw this time of year? The whopper plopper, a buzz bait, um, and a popper. Ooh, popper. No one throws that anymore, dude. Yeah, poppers are good, man. What's your favorite popper? Just a rebel. Really? Rebel popper. One's the one that's like, I don't know how big it is, like almost three inches long. I don't know, is that a quarter, a quarter yeah. ounce or something? Two and, a, you, two and a half inches, maybe. Do you ever throw a buzz bait? Yeah, buzz bait's uh, another one. That's a good one. They like buzz baits, man. <laughs> what, what size buzz bait do you generally use? Um, Probably like the spinner bait, like a three eighth ounce or something like that. Ooh, that's, Pretty decent that's size a... one. And then we have, uh, I'm going to pin this comment on Instagram. We have River Goat Outfitters. The Tiny Torpedo and Pop Bars are my go-tos. And again, if you're on Instagram, I apologize. Uh, StreamYard sucks. They won't let me actually you know, uh, bring the comment over so I can show it off. But then we also have uh, Kyle I here in the chat that says, Pop Bar, Zero Spook, Booyah, Hidden tiny torpedo. Yes, the, the hidden tiny torpedo. That's a, um prop baits aren't used very much anymore. Um Lucky Craft makes a bait called a, a Kelly J. Mm. And it's a prop bait. It's got a prop on the front and back. And that's a really good bait too. Is it's there a top water? Is there a top water bait that's better for new? heard of it? Yes, I have. I have. Um what top bait would you consider that's more for like big fish versus like just catching anything? They have a Kelly J Jr. That's pretty good. What's your favorite color? Uh, I don't really, um, just anything natural colored. I, I've always had luck with a, um, like a, a perch colored one for some reason. <clears throat> Jay. And the uh, and the um, the uh, buzz baits usually like black and the um, those uh, pop or those um, whopper ploppers like the black ones. 
I seem to have good luck with. Ooh, I don't know why. I mean, it really doesn't so matter well with the top of a, um, it really doesn't matter what the top of the uh, top water bait looks like. They can't see it. Yeah, I don't know why uh, top water, the black top water works so well. Okay, this thing right here, that's interesting. That's a very compact little top water. And the um, what's the what are the um, what are the sizes of the uh, um, there it is, walker floppers. What sizes do they have? Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, they have a sixty-five, don't they? Yes. Yeah, the sixty-five, which is a small one. Um, like th thank you, Spellcheck, for saving me there. Uh, do, 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 do. There we go. Here we go. So. You got the 130, the 190. Those are the two most popular sizes, the old tackle of the warehouse. Yeah, those are too big. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, like, those are real big. Let's go. Ooh. I can't spell. That's embarrassing to do on camera. Oh, well. Oh, the 75, the 90. Yeah, the 75. The 65 and the 75. Oh, the, the 90 seems to be okay, too. It just seems to be just, just long. It's not real, real big. There it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 so you got the you got the, the regular sizes would be the 90, the 130, the 130S, and then, of course, they get a little bit bigger than that. So interesting yeah, it's, stuff it's there. it's the 90. I, I find the, um, the 90 down seem to work real well. And then we got uh, Bruce here. Chrome Zara Spook Jr. has been amazing, especially the one I got out of the tree. That makes sense, too. Um, <laughs> yeah. I love, absolutely, I love a Zara Spook, especially for smallmouth. There's something about that erratic action on the top of the water they just absolutely love. Um, and then also, I don't know if a Zoom Super Fluke is considered top water or like subsurface because of like you work it on top. But it is below the water, so I guess it wouldn't be considered top water. Um, but yeah, a, a, a fluke, dude. Like especially in the water, and that was the one thing I realized too. And I'll talk about this a lot more tomorrow. Is like how important that water clarity is, because if that water is not right, they will not chase down a lot of those baits, th those visual presentations. Well, you need some water clarity for like uh, suspending jerk baits. <clears throat> um. The ones you don't need much clarity for the spinner baits and the chatter baits and stuff, but the, but those other ones you need some clarity. One of the baits that that'll start working real well, especially if the water starts getting lower. It was working earlier in the spring. Is a uh, wacky rig. Deadly, deadly stuff. So, there. Speaking of top water, I mean that's pretty top water. I mean that's just that's just below the surface, and then you can you can weight it down and let it fall further. But they usually hit it pretty quick after it hits the water. And I don't know why people don't like throwing top water. I'm mean, sorry. I'm sorry. I just had a stroke. My apologies. I don't see a lot of people throwing a wacky worm. I don't know why I just said that. Okay. I was thinking about two things at the same time. Um, yeah. Because like the wacky worm they is work. so freaking deadly. It, it, it does for smallmouth especially. And it, it, it's, it's a difference in style. If you're going to be a person that's going to work an area, the tubes, the Ned rigs, the wacky worms are absolutely deadly. But there are some anglers that that are very successful where they're just like, you know, shake and bake, baby, three casts and move. And so it's really depending on your style, but I would definitely encourage you to try a wacky worm, especially if the bite's a little bit off or you can't move. If you got spots clear water and it's low, real yeah. clear water and low. Um, that's a good bait to try. 100%. Especially um, a four inch one and a five inch one. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Definitely, I would. I would suggest going four inch, but I'm assuming you can have success with a five inch too, right? Yeah, no, the five inch is a good one because you could throw that weightless because it'll go out further because it's heavier. Yeah, that's a damn good point. So and use a um, use a little stinger hook. What do you mean? A little um, there are little stinger hooks made by a uh, owner. Are you saying they, an extra? Uh, an extra hook or just the one hook? No, no, it's just got a stinger hook. I think that's what they call it. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. It's just a, it, it looks like a um it's meant for something else, but I use them for um I use them for the wacky rigs, man. They seem to work pretty good. And then we got uh let me pull this over here. Oh no, 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 not a stinger. Not a stinger. Mosquito hooks. Gotcha. 
So we got a comment on Instagram from River Goat Outfielders. Wacky worms and tea rigs on the Shenandoah fish well, but you're going to be blown through a most of your plastics. Yeah, you're going to. That's the date with the devil you do there when you throw those kind of things. Is man, it's going to absolutely destroy those. Um, do 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 do. Let me fix this. Put user in timeout. Boom. Sorry about that, guys. Had a little bit of a spam bot there. I had to take care of in the old comment section. And then if you guys could, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out in the algorithm. It pushes this out to YouTube because YouTube did change its algorithm up two weeks ago and it's hurting outdoor content. So please, you know, push this thing. It really helps. What is the river looking like right now? Well, it was, um, it was up, it was up some and it, it had good, uh, it was stained and it looked good. Uh, you know, you had several feet of visibility. And then, um, uh, and then it, um, it's starting to fall now. So you're, uh, you're going to start getting clear water. I got to see, um, like for instance, the gauge right now, you always have to look at the gauge before you say something because it changes so much. These stupid gauges. Hold on. There we go. Nope, it's rising right now. Is that because so, of rain in Pennsylvania and West Virginia? That's because of that rain we had, and it's and it's it's like a delayed response. I, I really want to talk to you about this because I was curious. How much of a delayed response is it? Because again, we had that tournament on the Shenandoah River, and it was when that big ass cell was coming through. Oh, uh, well, that was, water down below. Hey, that water down below is probably being influenced by the um shenandoah but if you're up around dam five or dam four or something like that that water's not it's not rising anymore <laughs> so my question is if it rains a ton on friday and saturday when are you going to start seeing the water really tick up oh probably that day that evening so if I'm if I'm out fishing Friday and it was raining all day, I should see the water jump up a bunch. You'll start seeing it rise. Yeah, I mean you're not going to probably see it get muddy because you're probably not going to be out there. I've been out there when the water, when the um, the uh, shorelines start turning muddy, mm. and you can see the water slowly, the whole river start slowly start turning brown, and um, it, usually the shorelines go first, and then and then it creeps into the middle. But you, you can tell the water's rising because you're out there and there's just debris uh, floating down the river. So the first stage in that is it just gets that chalky color to it, but it doesn't necessarily like jump up 10 feet. And then it slowly starts to swell and change colors from the banks and works its way in. Yeah, it, it just starts changing colors, um, especially if you have like flash flooding. It starts changing um, uh, colors immediately. Interesting. Because those, uh, all those little tributaries start pushing mud. And then they're the first ones to clear up. The tributaries? Yeah. The river absorbs all of them. That's interesting. And you'll because... see that they're clear. You'll see the creeks and the other rivers clear before the Potomac is. Hmm. That's interesting. Because um, during that tournament, <clears throat> even with all the rain that we got, and you know we're all drowning, soaking wet, and you get out there on the river and... The river wasn't that bad, especially when people are talking like, oh, the gloom and doom of it's going to be flash flooding and we're all going to die. And you get out there and the river's not bad. But then on Sunday and today, you go across the river. It's like, it looks terrible. And it's like, wait, why did it take so long for that to like get nasty? But what you said makes a lot of sense. When also, where did it, um, where did it rain the most? Did it rain further north? Yeah. Yeah, if it rains further north, it takes it a while to get down to the uh, river. We got a great comment from here from Kyle. I crazy at a gonkin where I fish, the riverside gets muddy, muddy, but the split between the islands and the other side of Maryland side is generally clear. Hmm. And then we got Brady here. Brady says, "Not sure if you've ever fished Burke Lake, but if you're going for smallmouth, what are your what are you throwing there?" Are they lake smallmouth? Is he talking yeah. about Burke Lake? Yes, sir. 
I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know much about reservoir smallmouth or lake smallmouth, but uh, I would say su- I would suggest just plastics to start off with. So luckily, I do fish like smallmouth. Uh, jerk baits are really good. Something that's going to be moving to try to get them to react to it. You're going to be fishing offshore a little bit more, and you're looking for rock. You're looking for points, something like that, and you're trying to make them react. In lakes, they're very much like wolves, like pack animals. And you got to. Well, I, I know they'll suspend in um, in yeah. lakes and reservoirs, and yeah, if they, they suspend, will. they're hard to catch. They they are hard to catch, but you can find them if that makes any sense. So. If you work a very hot colored jerk bait, like a pink, a hot chrome, something like that, you might not catch a small mouth. And I'm assuming you don't have like four facing sonar, but you might not catch a small mouth, but they'll show themselves because they'll track it. And then you'll know that there's small mouth in the area. And then you can hit them with plastics and things like that and, and really kind of work through them too. So hopefully that helps. But like a hot pink uh, jerk bait, a yellow jerk bait, some really colorful colors <laughs> will we'll get, will make them show themselves. So. Yeah, hopefully that helps, boss. Right now, it's such a weird time of year because we're in that May to June kind of transition area when we get into true summer. Um, are, are the fish in spawn, post-spawn? Like, where are they at right now? They're probably, they're, they're still, they're still kind of in a spawning mode. By sometime in early June, you'll, you'll, they'll, they'll switch over to be post-spawn. And then um, when the fish are in a post-spawn uh, pattern, it, there's only a window. There's a small window that's open. Um, and uh, if, if the water's clear enough and you can see them, you can throw at them and they'll turn on the bait. Oh, that's cool. You've ever, you ever um, experienced that? Mm-mm. No, it, it only lasts for like a, like I said, it's a window. It could be a week, week and a half. I guess it depends on what the weather does or ch- uh, how the river changes, but they'll, um, you'll, you'll just start seeing them swimming. They'll cruise the shore on like flats and shorelines um big fish small fish it doesn't matter and if you throw at them they'll, they'll turn on it that's why that wacky rig is a good bait or a weightless sinko or something like that what's your favorite color green pumpkin <laughs> really and then uh, black green pumpkin and black why do you think black is so deadly well i i use it when the water's um beyond stain when it's dirty i think they can see it mm. I mean, they're totally driven by their vision, 100%. I mean, I know all these all the fish on the river have eyes, but these fish are 100% driven by by sight. I agree with that, yeah. How's the river fishing right now? Good. Good. It's, um, I, I, I feel like, I feel like they're going to uh, change up here soon, though, and go into like a post-spawn. I just feel I just just how we're just how they're biting how they're how we're catching them and stuff like that. Intuition, <laughs> I guess. What does that mean that they're going to go into post bomb? What are they going to do different? They're gonna they're gonna roll out of those areas that are uh, that they've been spawning in behind those rocks, and you'll find them further behind the rocks. You'll find them further off of a flat. You'll find them out in the middle of the river and current. I mean, I'm starting to catch them in the middle of the river. Mm. like you know oh, consistently catch them in the middle of the river when they make that switch to as you said it in the middle of the river and i'm going to try to get some better footage of this so i can like elaborate it our next time uh we're on the show together to talk about this but are, are they going to all be in the riffle are they also going to be back into like the deeper pools as well yeah, they'll be like on on uh, shallow ledges and stuff like that here shortly, and you'll be able to catch them. You know those areas where the um, where you see uh, rock ledges going across, and it's like three, four feet deep. Yeah, they're still going to be in shallow water. I mean, deep water. Yeah, they'll probably they could be in. I mean, deep water to the Potomac River is like six feet. Mm. And then we got we got so much good stuff here. I'm going to bring this up. Froze. So we got, uh, here we go. We got Rob's Woods and Custom Sawmilling. I think some are already in post-spawn in creeks where I live. Penn's Creek to be specific. Interesting, Bob. Uh, Rob and Woods Custom uh, Sawmilling, you just won a gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle. 
please email me, fishingthedmv at gmail.com or message me on Facebook and or Instagram to uh, get your gift card. That's interesting. Um, and then we got uh, Jonathan here, S-T-I-B-I. What's it like fishing the same stretch every day? Uh, that's interesting. So if you fish the same stretch habitually, do you get into like a rhythm of like this piece of the stretch is on, this piece is not on? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the stretch is miles long, though. I mean, um, there'll be, you'll fish a spot one day, and then they're 300 yards down the river the next, it seems like. That same type of activity that you had the day before, now it's like 300 yards down the river. And they just keep moving back and forth. And then and then there'll be areas where they're just not there anymore. If they're mm -hmm. there, they're just not biting. And then you have to move and... um some spots that you weren't catching them in the day before, now you're catching five or six and six of them in there the next day. What's it like it's fishing? Um, is there any fishing below Algonquian? <laughs> yeah, down there by Seneca. From what I understand, the, um, they're catching them down there right now. That's, su that's super rapidy, right? That's like below that little pool. No, just um, well above above it above, above the okay. of Seneca, right in there, and that in that stretch of river where the golf course is. And then down below, they're probably catching them down there. Mm. I just don't go down there because it, it, it'd be really hard to put a jet boat in there. It'd be really hard to get it back out too. <laughs> yeah. And it'd be, it'd be really hard to um, just maneuver in there, period. <clears throat> how Pretty nasty in there. With all this rain, how well is the Monocacy fishing? I haven't been up in the Monocacy in a while. I've heard it's pr fishing pretty good. Because that would clean up first, right? But the monocacy? I, yeah, you know what? The monocacy is weird, man. The monocacy, if it just rains a little bit, that darn river will get brown. Really? Wow. I, I think because of all the farmland, everything drains into the river, you know? Mm -hmm. There's not much of a buffer zone. That, that would be my guess on why it gets so muddy. Because it's still pretty rocky in a lot of areas. Plus Frederick. Like, Frederick is right there. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's still, from what I understand, it's still fishing pretty good. I don't know where, though. I mean, yeah, I only go up to about Route 28, um, and I check that from time to time to see if there's fish in there. And sometimes I hit it, and there's a bunch of fish in there. And sometimes, and most of the time, there's it, it's just not worth taking people up there. Mm. We got uh, we got two good questions here. I'll go to the first one. Jonathan asks, Jonathan asks, when guiding the same stretch, do you worry about pounding the same areas too much? Do you give them a relief? How does that work? Jonathan, you just want a gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle. No, I, I don't. Um, I don't like keep just going back to the exact same spots over and over and over again. I go to different places, different holes in that same stretch. And I'll try one, and if we catch a couple fish in one, I'll leave it, and I'll go to another one. I, I asked Travis. But, um, I don't fish the same. I don't fish the same stretches every day. Good. I asked Travis. I mean, of, some, uh, sometimes I'll I'll stay on a spot for a couple of days. I asked Travis of uh, Kingfisher Guide Service the same question about your rotation of spots. Now he floats, so he has to float a strip when he when he takes a person out, and so that is an interesting question. Like, how much do you rotate your spots? Um, when you take guides out or, or I'm sorry, guests out on the water. So that is interesting. Let's see here. Do, mm -hmm. do, do, do. Let me see. Where's the other one here? Another one here. Yeah, I can, do. I mean, uh, since I don't use a raft, I can, since I don't use a raft, I, I can just uh, bounce around up and up and down the river. And um, so, so I don't really hit the same spots over and over again. But there's some spots that just seem to be, um, there's some areas that just seem to be, uh, that produce fish every day. We got on the, I think they're going to be there regardless because it's a good spot. We got on Twitter here. We got another question on Twitter from Terrence seven, three, five, I think is what that is. Um, what is the fishing like right now above the Brunswick area? Where at Brunswick above Brunswick. Brunswick? Um, like where, where up above Brunswick, what is he talking about? Like he, up he around just, the 340 bridge? I'm assuming so. He just said above Brunswick. Oh, I haven't been fishing there in a while. I wouldn't know. Um, down, um, 
down below. I'm sure there's probably fish down below, uh, like the um, Brunswick area and stuff like that. There's always fish out there. Because it's shallow, right? Yeah, it's, it's shallow. There's and there's a lot of structure. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, they, 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 it doesn't matter if it's a spawn or not. They, these fish move. They just vacate an entire section of river and roll out and um, head head up or down river. It's crazy, man. You go out there one day and, and you're catching a bunch of fish. The next day you go out there and there's nothing there. Really? That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, and then we got another question here on the YouTube side of things. Kyle I asks, how is Point of Rocks? Point of Rocks. Um, that's fishing okay. That area that this time of year. This time of year, um, I'll start going down that in that area this time of year. And then um, all these areas right now, um, soon, into uh, coming into June, you want to fish the middle of the river. Uh, th th these fish are going to go all out in the middle of the river. They're, they're thin. They're looking for stuff to eat. I'm catching them, a lot of them with crawdads in their mouth right now. Interesting. So they're out in the middle. Of it. Do they eat bait fish at all, or is it pretty much crawfish is what they consume? No, no, I think they... I think on the Potomac, I, I think they um, stick to to like river minnows or, you know, the generic term for a small fish on the river. I, th I think they stick to small fish mostly. And then um, at certain times of the year, it seems like they switch over to those crawdads. But then they go back to minnows. We got a really good question here. Um, I am so sorry. I'm going to try real hard to say your name right, but I'm um, got a I got issues. Uh, Oh, racer x 72 did i do that right race racer x 72 what's the best ramp to put a jet boat in and out solo that's a good question well it would depend on the water level um but uh probably right now a good spot would be white's ferry because i think there's a bunch of water there that you could run I know there's mm. a bunch of water there that you could run and run it um, safely if that's what you're looking for. Also, do note about that because I just had a message on Facebook with somebody about that. I, I could be wrong here, Jeff, but you can't get to White's Ferry from the Virginia side, correct? Right now, you have to go to the Maryland side to get to it because the ferry shut yeah, down. Yeah, you got to go across um, Route 15. You got to go across that 15 bridge and then go go past Point of Rocks and go, uh, go south. Gotcha. Yeah, down 28. There you go. Yeah. yeah. And then going to pools. It's a good boat ramp. That's a really good boat ramp. It, it's, it's a good boat ramp. You want to put in close to the, uh, where the ferry sits. That's where the deeper water is. I mean, they haven't done anything to that boat ramp in years, but if you put in close to where the ferry is, um, that's where you get the deep water. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's okay. But, uh, the body, but the, the water there, is is safe to run that's a good spot um mouth of monocacy i would tell you edwards ferry but edwards ferry is closed mm. so on and another then, uh, note, dargan dargan's, dargan's closed good dargan would be a good place to put your boat in and just stay in that um that stretch of river just above dam three and then if you want to put your glass boat in, you can come up near me and crash at my place and we can do big slack or dam four, which is uh four locks where you can run a big boat. Um, here we go. We got, uh, we got a Patreon supporter here. Uh, well, we had two of them in the chat, but I, anyway, Ken, Kenny says, are you finding better quality fish early AM afternoon or evening right now? Um, all times of the day. Really, all all day long. You just got to be patient. Uh, the the morning, afternoon, and evening, and the the, the fishing is. I think the fishing is about the same because the water temperature. The water temperature is what right now, sixty five somewhere around 60, 65 degrees. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing what it is today, um, right now. And um, when the water is cool like that, it really doesn't matter. But once we get into June, it's going to matter. Like late June, July, and August. Um, yeah, early morning, late evening. 
but I, I really do. I don't think I don't think it matters. I'd feel comfortable doing a trip at ten o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. Once that summertime heat gets in there, it's really going to make an effect, and they'll start downsizing what they eat. Um, that's going to definitely happen. We got another Patreon supporter. We got Kyle I here. Um, evening is going to pick up here soon. Yeah, the evening bite will get like again as soon as it gets super hot. And this has been a weird freaking year, guys. It went from super cold to just hot. There was no in between. Um, we got Stephen Lloyd too in the chat. Uh, Stephen is saying, "Is Dargan Bend open again?" Also, I was smelling them on the spook. Smelling them? I was smoking them. I'm gonna say smoking them. I was smoking them on the spook this weekend on the lower. Oh, dude, yeah, the, the, they'll freaking D people in tournament fishing. Not to go on a tangent, but for some reason, people don't like to throw the spook in tournaments unless it's Smith Mountain Lake, Kerr in open body water, but they will kill it on the tidal Potomac. And because people don't throw it because it doesn't line up with what Bassmaster magazine kind of says. But uh, anyway, Jeff, apologies. Uh, it, when, do you think Dar closed. when do you think Dargan will open back up? Oh, I have no idea. It, I don't even, they don't even have the, the bridge is gone. Oh shit. So I don't even know when they're going to put it in. It's a national park service. So who knows when that'll happen. Knowing them a long time. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Probably this summer sometime. I'm not sure. Ooh, we got one more good one here. We got one from Jerry. Uh, Jerry said, Jerry uh, Colton. Again, uh, you just want a gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle. Um, actually, you know what? You just want one to, uh, well, this dude right here. Uh, Shallow Water Fishing Adventures Tackle. So message me yeah, on... Yeah, SWFA Baits. Uh, message me on Facebook, on Instagram, or email me fishingdv at gmail.com to get your prize. Are you guys supposed to have a big cicada event in your area? I don't think so. We just had one a couple years ago, didn't we? Three years ago. When was that? Huh? Three three years ago. Yeah, that happens like only so many every so many years, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. No, that was that was weird when those things were out. Mm -hmm. The uh, shorelines would be so loud all all evening long. That was crazy. Uh, I think and parts those carp of... were going crazy for him, man. We got River Goat all over on Instagram that says, "Nope, just too far north and east." No, I 100% agree with that. It is interesting, like how that goes in its cycles, but I can't wait for it to happen again. Hopefully it happens again while I'm still alive and functioning, not just like a old man with a, you know, breathing apparatus and a catheter. It in happens so like, what is it, it. Isn't it every 17 years or something? 17 to 20 years is generally what it is. Yeah. Generally speaking. How do you spell cicada? <laughs> You're asking me, have you watched the show? Uh, but some nice Let's individual... This guy had Jerry, it. Jerry in the chat had it, which is C I C A D A. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, no, it, it's going to happen. This guy says it in here. Seventeen. It's every seventeen years. We already had it. And then uh, we had Derek Smith that just said just had one in Alabama seventeen years ago. Right on, Derek. Is there any smallmouth fishing, Derek, in Alabama? Uh, that, that's river fishing. My apologies. I understand that there are lakes that have it too. Uh, let's see. And we got Rob Woods and custom sawmilling. Dude, that is a cool business. If that's your business, that's really cool. Um, they're, they're different years. Yeah, there are different years for that, which is absolutely true. Uh, you also caught a massive smallmouth, right? Yeah. Hey, hey, I got it real quick for you got it? everyone that everyone that really cares about cicadas. Brood X emerged in Maryland in 2021. They will not emerge again until 2038. That's awesome. There you go. And then, oh, and then it says brood. What is that? 21 or whatever that is in Roman numbers there. Um, will emerge in Southern St. Mary's County in 2024, 13, 13, every 13 years. Wow. That's crazy. Huh. Yeah. Huh. And then we got Whatever. another okay. we got another question so, here from uh Bruce. Bruce says, uh, what crankbait would you throw, if any? 
crankbait uh, brand on the Potomac River. Mm -hmm. I would say a Rapala DT4. Ooh. A Rapala DT4 and a... Um, uh, here's the three. The Rapala DT4, a um, Bandit 100 and 200. So, I mean, that, that's the two, the two different brands. And then um, my last one would be one of those KVDs. That what is, is a deadly one. Uh, the 1.0 yeah, the oh, or the 1.5. Yeah. Yep. That's what I was, that's what I was thinking of. Yep. My favorite colors are like the shark. My favorite colors like the chartreuse and black in that. They're really good. I would also suggest a bandit. I think it's a 200 series or 100 series bandit. Those are really good as well. There's also some good BFS crankbaits out there too, but they're kind of like uh, Shimano makes one. Mega Bass makes one as well. I have not personally like fished with them a lot, so I can't like give them a thumbs up or thumbs down, but I've, I've had friends. And if you guys want to go, I had three river rats on the show last week. That episode dropped today where all I do is talk about crankbaits. So that's a really good episode, Bruce, to talk about that. Yeah. But, um, uh, the colors I see. like, the colors I like to use on the river would be like a brown craw from, uh, um, the KVD series, 1.5s or 1.0s. Um, hold on. Let me, let me find a, let me find that one. Here's, here's one that's interesting that works. Um, what the hell is that? Oh, it's called Phantom Watermelon Red Crawl. That's a good color. That one works too. We got a big yeah. question for you, Jeff. We got a big question yep. for you, Jeff. Here it is from Bruce Thompson. How is this year fishing compared to the last on the Upper Potomac? And how is your lure selection transitioning right now? What are you coming off on and adding to your mix? You just cut out. You're going to have to say that again. Can you see it on the screen? Technology's great. Can you see the question on the screen? Yeah, but it's it's small. How Hold on, let me it, see. I'll repeat it for the camera. Yeah, go ahead. So say it again. How is this year's fishing compared to last on the Upper Potomac? And how is your lure selection transitioning right now? What are you coming off on and what are you adding to your mix? Oh, um, the fish has been pretty good. It's, it's about the same as it was last year for me. Um, and what I'll be probably switching over to are Cinco's, three inch Cinco's, four inch Cinco's, and those, the four inch and five inch, like I was talking about, um, wacky rig style, and then the three inch Cinco's on some type of slider head. I'll probably start throwing a lot of those. Um, and uh, probably, depending on the water level, um, spinner baits. I'll probably be throwing some spinner baits and chatter baits. That's chatter what I'll be switching over to. The chatter bait, guys, is absolutely deadly. And then, oh, Bruce... hey, hey, you can't forget, you, you can't forget the um, the Z Man tickler, man. <laughs> the Z Man tickler is the um, is the stuff. I definitely have a friend so, that is very passionate about throwing that bait. Um, yeah, absolutely. I have a friend that's very passionate about throwing that bait. Uh, we got, and then Bruce, uh, please email uh, Shallow Water Fishing Tackle. You just want a gift card to Shallow Water Fishing uh, Baits. They absolutely, he has some really cool stuff. He has some great mobile jig heads, custom stuff. He'll autograph it for you too with his picture as well if you ask really nicely. Uh, we got oh another gosh. question here. You're right. <laughs> Uh, we got another question here from Derek Smith, or not a question, a statement. I can't read. Uh, maybe Northern Alabama. I've caught one, some red eye rock bass in creeks. Okay, gotcha. Uh, and then Bruce says, "Thanks, Jeff. Hey, Thank you for sharing your insight." Bass this year on the Potomac. That's good because that's a sign of health, honestly, in a fishery. If you I, have a lot of rock bass, I've been catching a lot of rock bass. And you know what fish I catch a lot this time of year? The walleye on trips. People catch walleye. For really? whatever reason, I, I don't know any. I mean, I, I I mean I catch them and 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 um, know what they bite on the river, but I don't target them. And um, they bite everything that smallmouth uh, fishermen uses. But they they really like those. Uh, they like plastics and they like um, spinner baits for some reason. That's crazy. And then we have uh, Bruce Tom Bruce here in the chat says Jeff is the man. 
Uh, thank you for sharing your insight. Jeff is the man. Um, again, just uh, Bruce, just hit hit Jeff up and you can reclaim that card. Uh, let's see. We got two more questions here. We got Kyle I. Memphis, comment minnow, uh, size number two, number three. That is a good one. And then Kyle I. Black and blue. That's really good as well. Uh, Jeff, yeah, tell us the story about that big fish just as we ran out the show here tonight. Oh, yeah, I caught, um, not me, but my, my, one, of my, one of my trips recently. Um, I caught a, um, or we caught a, um, small mouth that was over 23 inches. That's that insane. fish went over seven pounds. Mm. You got to start getting a video camera, bud. I mean, I'm telling you, man, Whew. it, it was footage. caught on a, um, it was caught on a tickler, man. <laughs> a tickler. A Z-Man tickler. No, no. Was it the TRD? Well, anyways. Either either one of those, I, but I know it was green pumpkin. But man, they um they've been eating those TRDs, man those those net rigs. But yeah, that that fish was caught um in a in a classic spawning type of situation, um you know in a uh, uh grab with a gravel bottom, uh, a lot of water flow going on the left and right, and uh, that fish was big, man. Mm. that fish's bottom lip was going past the 23 mark that's an absolute monster she one was, for this uh, she was large and in charge dude that's freaking awesome again guys they're absolutely in there we have jacob bell saying you know 23 inch fish is massive last last thing of the night here for you guys we'll make sure i don't want this one to go too long tonight uh jacob bell uh need your opinion on trolling motors I fish rivers and can't afford a nice trolling motor. Is it feasible to hold position with my jet? Interesting. Yeah, I do it a lot. I have a, um, I have a spare trolling motor that I'm getting ready to sell. I don't know what he wants to spend, but um, have him contact me. Yeah. So again, there's two parts Can you that's, do that. Yep. Yeah, uh, there's two parts to that. Um, Jacob Bell, please message uh, Shallow Water Fishing Adventures. Just message their email address, and that way you can get into contact with Jeff about that. Uh, the other thing about that message is, can you hold your position with a jet motor? And what you're saying is, yes, you can. Yeah, you, you can, but um, just for the person that's fishing with you, I wouldn't try it by yourself because you're just going to go left and right, left and right, and... Um, but yeah, no, you can hold position if if you're holding for someone else that's in the boat. I do that a lot in real swift water, so I don't uh, have to use my trolling motor. Because gotcha. a lot of times, if you're in real swift water, that means the water's real shallow. So I don't have to worry about hitting a rock with the uh, prop. Mm. So that's what I do. Perfect. All right. Awesome and, stuff. Um, it doesn't affect the fish. They still bite. Awesome stuff, dude. Awesome. Uh, what do you got coming up here uh, so people can find you and... Get out on the boat with you. What do I got coming up? You mean um, uh, for uh, I got I got available. If you mean availability, is that what mm -hmm. you're talking about? Yippers. Yeah, I have availability in June. The first week of June right now, I've got a um, what for the 20th of May, May right now. But I've got the third open. I know a lot of people, if they work Monday through Friday, want to take off a Monday. So I have Monday open right now, and I have uh, a Friday open on the 7th. Wow. Starting off early in June. There you go, guys. Uh, again, if you want to, please, please go out with them. Also, you know, big news here. Uh, Shallow Water Fishing Adventure has come on to help uh, keep the show alive. If you'd like to, if you're a Patreon member, all Patreon members will receive 20% off their orders uh, as long as they're over $20 from Shallow Water Fishing Tackle and Baits website if that's i think i said that correct um and also it really yeah. helps support jeff as well and again if you guys are trying to go kayaking also, or so um go ahead go ahead go ahead uh if you're going to go out on the river and you've never been there before just give jeff a call and talk to him about it and he'll make sure that you don't drown and die if you're trying to just go float the river so again you know use him uh, yeah hey um also i thought we were talking about um each month we'll do I'll do something different too for for your Patreon members and there'll be some other new deal and I'll send you a code for that so you can share that with them. Yes, Did we exactly. Talk about that. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. That's yeah, what's uh, okay. Oh, we got Jerry Colton here. What's a full day price? Um, I think that's on his website. You can also just go check it out there. Yeah, it's but. on my website. Go to um, go to SWFABaitTackle.com or ShallowWaterFishingAdventures.net. Yep, and then there's no fun. I'm that. Uh, and then he said, like, oh, there's no fun in that going to the website. Yeah, I, I get you, boss. Uh, but then again, guys, if you have any questions for me, please let me know. Uh, again, tomorrow night we are doing a members only. I just people absolutely enjoyed the tidal water breakdown I did called how not to suck on the tidal Potomac. I just fished the Shenandoah River again. I lived on the Shenandoah River. I'm going to just regurgitate everything I know, every secret I'm dumping out for my Patreons tomorrow night. If you don't make it at 7 p.m., do not worry about that. It will be available indefinitely for all Patreon members, but that's going to be starting 7 p.m. tomorrow night, How Not to Suck on the Shenandoah River. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Go check out Jeff at Shallow Water Fishing Inventors. Join us on Patreon, and we'll see you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle. <laughs>